Hey everybody, welcome to Change Your Diet, Change Your Life. And uh, today we're going to talk about some changes in your diet you can do to really improve your health. And these are based on my experience and my reading, some of my research, and then also the experience of a lot of my family members and my close friends, and some, things, some, some people who are patient also. So the first thing we have to do is make the attorneys happy by going through the whole disclaimer, and I'll just read it to you. Uh, the material in this presentation, the audio CD and the materials, or the printed materials, is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for the advice and care of your physician. Any of the lifestyle program is outlined in the printed material, the audio CDs and materials, and or the presentation should be followed only after consulting with your physician to make sure it's appropriate for your individual circumstance. And the reason is this. Uh, I'm a doctor, but I'm not your doctor. And what I don't know is if you have some odd kind of disease like... Uh, polycythemia, where you can't have enough, where you can't eat too much iron, or uh, if you have some something where you can't eat a certain amount, of, a certain kind of food, or something. So you should check with your doctor. And the author and publisher disclaim all responsibility for adverse effects that may result from the user application of the information contained in this presentation, the audio CDs and materials, and in the printed materials. And so now the attorney's happy, so we can start. <laughs> Uh, I'm Justin Anderson, I'm a physician, a medical doctor here in town, but I don't want to be your doctor. And I want you to have as few doctors as possible, and I want you to take as few medications as possible, and to really be as healthy as possible. And a lot of that can be accomplished through diet. Um, it's not something that we're taught in medical school. It's something that basically I stumbled upon personally in my own life, and uh, after that I did a lot of reading and a lot of research on the benefits of the kind of diet that we're going to talk about today. And there's something that is making modern, modern Americans sicker. Uh, there's something that's making two-thirds of Americans obese or overweight. There's an epidemic of diabetes, heart disease, Tons of people have gastroesophageal reflux disease, which is acid reflux or heartburn, and they advertise on TV all the time to take today's purple pill. High blood pressure, sleep apnea, which is related to weight, and cancers. There are a whole bunch of cancers that are related either to diabetes or to weight, uh, the, such that if you're overweight or you're obese or if you're diabetic, your risk of those cancers is significantly higher than if you're normal weight with normal blood sugar. And over the past 30 years, since the 1980s, this is a graph of obesity and morbid obesity in the United States, and it's going up. But it's not just our weight, it's also diabetes, because following on the heels of the obesity epidemic is the diabetes epidemic. It's also increasing. And obesity and diabetes, they actually go hand in hand. You can track them right with each other. In fact, the CDC estimates that one in five to one in three Americans will be diabetic by, the, uh, by 2050. That's 100 million Americans diabetic. Kids are getting diabetes. Kids are getting obese, overweight, diabetes, hypertension. They're getting diseases that normally would just happen to adults. And it's not just those problems. It's also digestive problems. Chronic constipation, irritable bowel syndrome. You see this advertised on TV. That's, that's from our diet. Gastroesophageal reflux is from the irritation from mainly the wheat in our diet. Crohn's disease and other autoimmune disease and inflammatory diseases, they're on the increase too. And things like weight and type 2 diabetes are just the, the tip of the iceberg. Those are the things that you can see. You can see somebody's weight externally but internally, there are a bunch of other things going on, like their blood pressure, poor blood lipids, uh, insulin resistance, which means your body doesn't respond normally to insulin, and hyperinsulinemia. And it's actually the insulin that causes a lot of these diseases, and the insulin is caused by the carbohydrates we eat in our diet. And there's a syndrome called the metabolic syndrome, where these uh, symptoms are grouped together Elevated, elevated glucose, which is being pre-diabetic, elevated blood pressure, 
low HDL cholesterol, that's your good cholesterol, and elevated triglycerides. So there are lots of patients who, they aren't overweight or obese, but they actually have the metabolic syndrome because they have uh, high blood pressure, low HDL, and elevated triglycerides. And there are other diseases which are kind of odd. And in fact, one of the patients, not, I'm a doctor, so I tend to call people patients, so I apologize. One of the people who was at the morning conference, the reason she came to the conference, she had NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. She has a, she has, usually you get, patients get fatty liver disease because uh, alcohol destroys, uh, alcohol destroys the liver, but there, there's an epidemic of people who have fatty liver disease, but they don't drink. And it's because the carbohydrates in our diet are packed into our liver as fat, and they end up with this fatty liver disease. Small dense LDL, that's uh, the type of LDL cholesterol that's actually atherogenic, it causes heart attack and stroke. Inflammation, inflammatory diseases, and polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, in my age group, I know a lot of people who are at the age to where they want to start a family and they want to get pregnant, women, and they can't. Polycystic ovarian syndrome makes them infertile. And it's actually the carbohydrates in the diet that make them infertile because they treat polycystic ovarian syndrome with diabetes pills. A diabetes pill called metformin. It's an insulin sensitizer. And then these other diseases that we haven't mentioned, depression, osteoporosis, Alzheimer's, those are also related to our diet. The good news is this, infectious diseases have been on the decline. The infectious diseases are all coming down, but the bad news is that inflammatory and immune diseases are on their way up, like multiple sclerosis, Crohn's, type 1 diabetes, which is an immune attack against the pancreas, and asthma. And we Americans used to be slim, happy, healthy, active people who felt like this. <laughs> but in recent years, we've gotten to where we feel <laughs> more like this. But the good news is that with the change in our diet, by feeding your body foods that your body understands and fuel that your body understands, you can go back to looking and feeling more like this. And it really can't happen if we're going to meet some of those people today. We'll talk about them and meet some in person. So the question is, what's making us sicker? Does anybody want to throw out an answer? Yes? Wheat in our diet. Yeah, our diet and wheat is a big component of that. But the, the bad news is that our diet's making us sicker, and at the same time, if our diet's making us sicker, then what can make us healthier? It's a change in our diet. And that's why this whole lecture is called Change Your Diet, Change Your Life. Because it's an opportunity to really take control of your health um, by eliminating some of the things in your life that your, your body doesn't know how to process. Once again, a lot of people just suffer from one, one of the symptoms that may be the weight of the diabetes or maybe a cluster of diabetes and blood pressure. But all of these things are related together. The bowel problems here, from diverticulitis to irritable bowel syndrome to Crohn's, these are mainly direct irritation from wheat in the diet. And so, if we have all of these different symptoms, then what would be the name of the disease? The one disease that most of us modern Americans are suffering from is carbohydrate intolerance. We can't tolerate the types or the amount of carbohydrate that's in our diet. And that's what's causing us to be hypertensive, diabetic, overweight, low energy, metabolic syndrome, etc. And the way that your body works is that when you, combine, when you consume refined carbohydrates like uh, wheat, cereal grains, and sugars, your body responds by releasing insulin. And it's this insulin that causes most of the problems that we discuss. Because the insulin directly causes high blood pressure by making the blood, ves the blood vessels clamp down, increasing the blood pressure, it also makes you hold on to fluid. When people go on a low carb diet, they lose a lot of weight in the first week or two, and most of it's fluid. 
It's actually a really good thing to lose that fluid because that fluid was what was giving you the high blood pressure. So critics of a uh, low-carb, high-fat diet might say, oh, you just lose water weight at first. Yeah, but the water weight is what gave you the blood pressure. So it's good to lose the water weight. The insulin, if insulin is the fat growth hormone in the body. So it causes the obesity. Insulin, uh, insulin contributes to heart disease, it's related to diabetes. Insulin is a growth hormone related to cancer. And sleep apnea occurs with, um, as you get bigger, and that was my story, because I had sleep apnea. And all these diseases that we're talking about, they're called diseases of civilization, because people who eat a Western diet, they eat what would be a standard American diet, they end up with these set of diseases. And they're, they're not just diseases that cause an average disability of 10 years for each of us at the end of our life, but they're also the leading cause of death in America. Heart disease, cancer, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, some kidney diseases related to diabetes. So I'll introduce you to a concept that I call the killer carbs. And I call them the killer carbs because these are the carbohydrates in our diet that are making us sick and that are also uh, you know, uh, causing those diseases that ultimately lead to our demise. And the first of the killer carbs are sugar and high fructose corn syrup. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's 100% organic sugar, if it's agave nectar. These are listed as the don'ts. In your handout, they're listed as the don'ts. There's a section called the do's and a section called the don'ts. Um, the sugar and high fructose corn syrup, number one, they raise your blood sugar. The blood sugar cross links the proteins in your body and causes damage to your cells. Number two, the sugar increases your insulin level. And number three, uh, sugar and high fructose corn syrup, um, they're processed in your body the same way by many of the same enzymes that process alcohol. Sugar is processed in your body like a toxin. Number two, wheat. All kinds of wheat products, whether they're white or whole grain, bread and bagels, pasta noodles, cakes and muffins, flour tortillas, um, wheat raises your blood sugar higher than most any other food, number one. And wheat has a lot of different problems with it we'll talk about later. Certain fruits are very high in sugar, dried fruits are exceptionally high in sugar, and fruit juices have as much sugar as an ounce per ounce as a soda. So lots of times we may give our kids or grandkids fruit juices telling them that it's healthy, and it actually has as much sugar in it as a soda, Coca-Cola, Dr. Pepper, whatever. Rice and cereal grains and other starchy foods, as well as corn in the form of chips and tortillas, these are gonna raise your sugar. And potato, whether they're baked, mashed, chipped, or fried. So if you cut the killer carbs, if you cut the base off of the food pyramid, this is what happens. You stop the refined carb consumption and all of a sudden you're stopping the pathway that stimulates the insulin. And when you stop the pathway that stimulates the insulin, boom. You reduce your risk for all of these diseases. And these are the diseases that we have. These are diseases that my patients have. They come in, uh, I'm an ophthalmologist, I do cataract surgery, and my patients are mainly the age 65 to 85. And I can't tell you how many come in on 12, to 15 prescription medications. And Dr. Lynn Bickley, who was one of my professors in, in my internship in medical school, she said, if you see an elderly patient and you don't take them off at least one medication, you're doing them a real disservice. And so, you know, you can get rid of some of your meds just by this change in your diet. I had a question on this topic for that. Yes, ma'am. On the potatoes, is this all potatoes, or is it like maybe sweet potatoes are okay occasionally, or not? Because I know you had potatoes. I would say sweet potatoes are okay occasionally, but I would count the carbs. So my question for you is, what would you call a food that causes all of these diseases? If I told you I have a, in my hand I have a vial, I'm holding a vial right here. And if you take this vial, this vial will give you diabetes, heart disease, stroke, um, diverticulitis, and gallstones. Just take it. What would you call what I had in that vial? Drugs. What? A drug. 
a drug, a poison, a toxin. And that's what I'm telling you here is that these foods on the right, if you're, if you're suffering from any of these diseases, if you're suffering from any of these problems, then these foods are a poison to you. And I'm not saying that they're a poison for everybody. Because there are some people and some patients, some people, some patients who can eat whatever they want. They never put on any weight. They don't have any health problems. And these foods might not be a poison to them. But if you're suffering from bowel problems, blood pressure, diabetes, uh, inflammatory disease, then these, these foods are not food to you. They're not healthy. They're actually a poison to you. And I know they were to me. Because this is me three years ago before I lost the weight. And a different baby, by the way. Someone in the first hour. Different baby, same age. But this is me before I lost the weight. I had a fat roll over my elbow with the belly. Um, my head had exploded in size. Um, and I was 213.5 pounds. And I remember the 0.5 because I wrote it down. I used to have a sheet that I kept with me for a long time. My blood pressure was 142 over 88. And then three years later, I just weighed myself like three days ago. I'm 169 pounds. My blood pressure is down almost 20 points. My HDL good cholesterol has gone up to 76. And normal good cholesterol is 40 to 71. And mine is 76. That's what you want. Triglycerides, normal triglycerides are like 30 to 150. My triglycerides are 48. Super low, that's what you want. Hemoglobin A1C is just a measure of average measure of blood sugar, normal. And I don't, I don't really have pre's here. I do know the first year that I lost weight, my HDL was 42. And then in the last year, my HDL has gone up to 76. You know what makes your good cholesterol go up? Fat. Fat. Eating more fat. Eating, eating fat and cholesterol is good for you. We're going to go over that. So how did I do it? How did I lose the weight? How did I improve my blood pressure? Oh, and I stopped snoring, by the way. My wife was kicking me out of the bed because I was snoring. And when I lost the weight, I got to sleep back in my own bed again, which was, a good, uh, uh, which was good for me. And I did it by cutting the bottom off the food pyramid. I eliminated the wheat, the grain, the cereal, the rices. All of these processed and refined carbohydrates, I just cut them out of my diet. And then people ask all the time, they say, well, if you don't eat carbohydrates, then what on earth do you eat? You know, what do you eat for breakfast if you don't have cereal and cinnamon raisin toast and pancakes? For breakfast, we do a whole lot of eggs. I eat a whole lot of uh, meat, and red meat is fine, beef, pork, bacon, whatever. Tons of vegetables, tons of berries, but not all. Some fruits are very high in carbohydrates, so you have to watch some fruit. We'll talk about that. Lots of healthy fat. Healthy fat from avocado. Healthy fat from olive oil. Avocado, olive oil, and coconut oil are all monounsaturated fats. Healthy. Good fat. Um, lard. You can eat lard. Lard is actually healthy for you. Um, full fat dairy. Full fat cheeses. Full fat fermented dairy like yogurt. Healthy. And if I do eat bread or cereal grains, you know she asked the question about potatoes. So if I do eat some potatoes, I eat very little potatoes. This is actually the Atkins Food Guide Pyramid. And this is another way to look at the same thing. This is from Wheat Belly. This is the Wheat Belly Food Guide Pyramid. And up in the right, it just knocks out, the, eliminates the wheat and the grains. Take out the wheat and the grains. You're left with lots of healthy fat from meat, olive oil, coconut oil, lots of the eggs, all the vegetables that you want, some fruit, and there's tons of stuff to eat. The average American diet gets 65% of calories from refined processed carbohydrates. So what I'm telling you is cut that 65% out and focus on real foods, mainly foods that don't require a package. And that's the, that's the whole basic idea of this diet, is that you focus on real foods. LCHF is what they describe the, the low carbohydrate, high fat diet in Sweden, that's what they call it. And butter, all the butter you want. 
grass fed butter is the best because it's high in omega-3 acids and lower in omega-6. You get healthy fats from avocado, healthy fats from olives and olive oil. Healthy fats come from meat, fish, fermented dairy, heavy cream. Yeah, you can eat heavy cream. You can, in fact, you can eat heavy cream every single day. <laughs> and you're going to be okay. The, the, the interesting thing is this. The interesting thing is that the more fat you eat, the better your blood lipids look. Your blood lipids are like your, the, the HDL cholesterol and triglycerides. And it primes your body to burn fat. Your brain, by dry weight, your brain is mainly fat and cholesterol. Your brain actually needs fat and cholesterol to uh, function. So what kind of results can I expect from the low-carb, high-fat diet? These are typical things, right, that you would expect weight loss in an older guy. Weight loss in a younger lady. This is a mother and daughter. Weight loss in an older and a younger lady. A low-carb, high-fat diet. But there are also a lot of unexpected things that happen by cutting refined carbohydrates and wheat out of the diet. And one of them is this. If, uh, skin inflammation like acne, gone. Fatty liver disease, that's packing your liver full of fat, gone. Metabolic syndrome, metabolic syndrome, high blood pressure, gone. Sugar cravings and cravings for other foods, uh, lots of snacking, gone. High blood pressure, diabetes, gone. And epilepsy, seizure disorder, has been treated with low carbohydrate, high fat diet since the 1920s. A lot of this isn't new. Actually, none of it's new. It's just we've been told the wrong thing for 30 years. Metabolic syndrome, gone. And digestive problems like irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, um, Crohn's disease, gone. Those stories I just showed you, those were stories from the internet. And so, you know, anybody can write anything they want on the internet. And I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen these things with my own eyes and seen them in my own life. And so basically, this is my wife, Laura, and you'll hear from her later today. So she's seven months pregnant, and I don't know if any of you have been pregnant or been around pregnant ladies, sometimes they get awful indigestion. And so she's living off of tongues and myelanta for her indigestion, and we read this book called Wheat Belly. And in Wheat Belly it says, some people have indigestion from wheat, and so if you cut the wheat out, it goes away. And so she said, well, let's try this. And so we went completely wheat free in the house, and our indigestion went away completely. Never another time. What we were taught in medical school is that the baby takes up this room that your stomach's supposed to take up. It pushes your stomach up so they get reflux, and that's why we have indigestion symptoms, right? Well, she cut the wheat out, and she's seven months pregnant, the indigestion's gone. Then she's eight months pregnant, bigger baby, no indigestion. Nine months pregnant, no indigestion. And the thing that convinced me was that several months after the baby was born, my wife had a cookie, a regular cookie from the bakery. And she said, I have indigestion for the first time in months. So you take the wheat away, the indigestion goes away. You add the wheat back, it comes back. She had gestational diabetes. And if she had a muffin, a heart-healthy brand muffin, we're sold the idea that they're heart-healthy brand muffin from Market Street, her blood sugar would be through the roof. But you cut out the grains, you cut out the wheat, <coughs> blood sugar, normal. Completely normal. Her hemoglobin A1C is lower than mine. And here's another guy. Does anybody know him? Garen. Garen. Yeah, so that's, that's my son. And at the same time that the whole house went wheat free, my son had, uh, he had had this runny nose, nasal allergies, and every time he would sneeze, the snot would come all the way from his nose down to his waist. So it was snot from his nose to his waist, and it was like that for months. And after being like that for months, my wife said, look, this isn't normal. We have to make him an appointment with the allergist, and we made an appointment with the allergist. But before he had his appointment with the allergist, we read wheat belly, we went wheat free, and the chronic nasal allergies went away completely. The sneezing went away completely. And the way that I know with 100% certainty that it's the wheat is that if we go to a birthday party, we eat a piece of cake, or he eats a chicken nugget, 
something that's breaded, something that has flour on it. He'll sneeze, the snot will come back, sinus allergies for three days, and then it's gone. So take the wheat away, if it gets better, add the wheat back, the problem comes back. And there are a lot of other people I know who, as soon as I found out about this, I became a, like a sold out believer, and I was telling everybody, you cut the carbs, cut the wheat, improve your health, and so I know all of these people here, diabetes medications, gone. Chronic digestive problems, gone. Nasal allergies, gone. Nighttime sneezing, gone. Inflammation of the eye, gone. High blood pressure, off three medications, gone. You'll meet him today. Chronic irritable bowel syndrome and diarrhea, gone. Poor exercise performance, gone. PCOS, gone. And PCOS, gone and pregnant. Young, it's PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, young women of childbearing age, they want to have a family and they can't. They're infertile. It's caused by the diet. You cut the carbs out of the diet, and you can, you know, these women become whole again. They can have a family. And now I want to introduce you to our first guest speaker of the day. This is Bob Barnes. Bob Barnes and I, we grew up together in Odessa. And I was a bad influence on him for most of his life, except for last year when he got on the Cut the Killer Carp program. And there's him then, and you guys will hear him now. He'll talk a little bit about uh, the weight that he lost, improvement in some of his digestive issues, and what on earth do you eat if you don't eat wheat? He will also tell you about the health food store that he runs. The, the, uh, a health food restaurant that he runs. Great. Thank you. It's good to be here today. And uh, yeah, like Justin asked me if I'd speak, and I was like, I, I definitely will because, like, like I believe in this. It, it's a, it's a, it's a great, it's a great thing. I've known Justin for for a long time. And he was, you know, he was, he was talking about this, how, how great it was. And I saw him, I saw, you know, he had lost a lot of weight and, and, you know, was feeling better and healthy. And so I went through the online course that he had and, uh, I mean, it just was like instant. It was, it was amazing. And uh, I went from 210 pounds to 170 um, pounds in uh, three months, to be three months to lose 40 pounds. And like, not only that, but like I had more like energy. I haven't been sick even one time since uh, I started the the, the diet. Um, and had more energy. I, I started like exercising again. Um, in fact, I ran my fastest mile that I ran in in, a, in a 18 years last last month. So fastest I've run since I was in high school. And uh, so lots of energy. I do have a. I own a restaurant. It's a it's a, a barbecue restaurant, which which really can be a health food restaurant. And uh, as long as you're good, like like I can't eat like the like, like the peach cobbler and the the, 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 the Texas toast and the, the, the potato salad, but I can eat you know brisket and turkey and chicken and ribs and I mean and I've done that and it's actually helped my sales a lot. My sales are up ten percent just from everybody like seeing the. The before and after <laughs> as a joke but <laughs> you know we should post that we should post that at rocking queue before and after rocking queue yeah <laughs> yeah then i might have like a 25 percent sales growth but uh, yeah anyway it, it's really it's really made a big difference after i you know i started losing losing weight everybody was asking me man you're looking great what are you doing so people like my my uh my, like family has now gotten into it my sister couldn't have children. She started doing the diet. She's lost about 30 pounds, and now she's she's uh, two months um, pregnant for the first time. So I, we're all believers in it. We've always liked Justin and thought he was, you know, uh, smart. <laughs> but now we know he is. So um, anyway, I, but uh, yeah, I I, uh, I feel better. Like I said, you know, I don't get sick. Uh, before when I was uh, right out of high school, I'd gone on a trip to a. Mexico City, and I got like a really bad, like, like a um, salmonella uh, food poisoning, 
and my stomach had been kind of been upset, you know, I had indigestion, just upset the stomach a lot, it depended on, you know. And then once I started this, I haven't had a problem since. And uh, it's, it's, it's really amazing on that as well. So, and then, you know, like I do, I, 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 the one thing I was gonna say too is that this isn't like a diet, you know, because you know, diets are hard. You know, people don't, don't like want to do a diet. They don't, they don't want to go and be, and be hungry all the time. Because like when you're hungry, no one, no one, no one, no one, no one wants to be around you. Well, I kind of like people being, being, being around me. So, but I'm, I'm never, I'm never hungry. I eat what I want. You know, I feel good. Uh, I, I look good. I think. So, um, anyway, I, I, I eat a lot of, you know, just, you know, like a, a protein and vegetables and fruits, and I feel, I feel great. So, any, any um, questions today? Actually, like it's in Odessa, Texas. Yeah, it's called a, a, a Rock and Cube Snow Council. If you're ever there, we've actually won Best Barbecue for 12 years in a row. And we, we make people that are getting, they're overweight and skinny. So, <laughs> so, so. Yeah, if you're ever there, stop on by. And, and it brings up a good point. I mean, you should never be hungry. The, the, it's the carbohydrates in your diet that make you hungry. Because your blood sugar comes up and then your blood sugar crashes. And when your blood sugar crashes, you're hungry. You, you should eat as much fat and protein as you, as you want. As much fat, protein, and vegetables as you want. You can eat as much as you want, as often as you want. You should never feel like you're struggling with being hungry, like you're starving yourself. When, how long did it take from then to now for you to change up the way you live? It actually took. Um, like a, a three months, um, and like in the first seminar, I was telling everybody. At, at first, I was just, I was I was losing weight. And it was you know, I kept losing it. And I, I was afraid. I was like, man, I, I, you know, I, I'm gonna I, 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 I'm gonna blow away if the wind blows. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, about about like 170, I stopped losing weight, and that's that's kind of where I, I stopped. And uh, and really, I you know I that's one thing I come to is every now and then I will like you know, you know cheat on the diet. I don't, I, I don't want him to know that, but I, I guess he knows now. I mean, but that's, that's the thing is when when you when you when you when you embrace this and it's it, it's your lifestyle, it's like like you don't have that like that like a guilt anymore, you know. And you and you feel good about yourself, and it actually helps your self esteem, makes you feel good, and it takes a lot of that like you know, stress. Because really, let's be honest, that that's a big stress in today's world. Everybody's worried about what they eat. I don't worry about that anymore, you know. If I wanna. If I want to be bad, I can be bad. If I want to have to eat a birthday cake, the entire birthday cake, I can. You know, I'm not going to do that because I don't. You know, but this thing is it's an exaggeration. But anyway, um, it, it, it was kind of instant when I, I started doing it. I mean, I, I started losing weight instantly. I know Justin will talk to you more about that later because it is different for you know for men and women and ages, and I kind of fit the right you know profile. But yeah, it took me about three months to. To, to, to get from, from there to there. Any other questions? What fats do you mainly use whenever you're cooking? Like not the restaurant, but that's at your house. Uh, actually, I, you know, I, 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 I like to use like an, um, like olive oil. That's what I like to use. But I mean, I don't really worry about that a lot because it, that's. I mean, I can use whatever I want. I mean, basically, you know. I mean, there's things I can't use, but. Um, I, I actually used to use olive oil, that's why I use a lot. Do you have any? Well, yeah, you know, the, um, I would say the, the safest oils would be, what would be butter, lard, butter, lard, um, and then the olive oil and the coconut oil. Avocado. I don't. I don't know if you can just buy an avocado oil. Yeah, I've never tried to buy. It. Yeah, there's a whole the whole discussion of oils is kind of interesting. Um, uh, you can, there's a book called Toxic Oil. It's not listed in the handout. But there's a book called Toxic Oil which discusses uh, why saturated, basically. Coconut oil and olive oil, those are mono unsaturated, mono unsaturated oils. Your body knows what to do with them. Lard, butter, those are saturated fats. Your body knows what to do with that. 
the polyunsaturated fats, your body doesn't really understand how to process them. You can read that book, Toxic Oil. He talks about the Los Angeles VA study where they put these VA patients on polyunsaturated fats to lower their cholesterol, and they watched them, I believe, for 10 years. And they wanted to look and see if it improved their chance of heart disease. Well, the chance of heart disease was the same in both groups. The only difference was the ones who ate all the polyunsaturated fats had a higher incidence of cancer. So your, your body doesn't know how to process. Uh, it, the polyunsaturated oils are like vegetable oil, corn oil, things like that. So if you eat butter every day, which I love butter, it won't clog my arteries? No. Eating butter every day will clean your arteries. It's an um, I eat lots of, of, of butter. What happens is you eat carbs, your carbs, the carbs go into your body, they go into this organ called the liver, and your liver packages all those things as triglycerides, okay? And the triglycerides, those go into your, those go into your fat cells, they're packed into your fat, they, make, they increase your weight, those triglycerides eventually get turned into LDL, which gets turned into these small, dense LDL particles, and small, dense LDL particles are what get stuck in your arteries and are associated with heart disease. If you cut the carbs, this whole thing goes backwards. And so the triglycerides, the fats, come out of your fat cells, you lose weight, it goes to your liver, and your liver uh, delivers that to your tissue to burn for fuel, so you're burning the fat now, and then um, this small dense LDL goes away, and now you have this large fluffy LDL, and large fluffy LDL does not cause heart attack or stroke, it's not atherogenic, and your body is primed to burn fat. So, the whole, so now your body's primed to burn fat, and you're not eating the carbs. So if you eat butter, your body burns the, your body burns the butter preferentially as fuel. Um, there's something else here I was gonna tell you. But basically, your body will burn the fat and use the fat as a fuel. It'll use the butter. Hydrogenated oils, those are also, those, hydrogenated oils will clog your arteries. Yes. And that, those are like margarines, and those are, they're called partially hydrogenated or hydrogenated vegetable oils. Those are very bad for your arteries. Oh, the other thing I was going to tell you. So now the, the, the fat is coming out of your fat cells, right? And the, also stored in your fat cells is cholesterol. So the fat and the cholesterol is coming out. And you know what you need to liberate that cholesterol? HDL. Okay? So the HDL helps pull this out. So your HDL goes up. That's your good cholesterol. So what happens is, um, as long as you are eating carbohydrates and you're storing away fat, your HDL stays low. And then as you eat more fat and you're liberating your fat, then your HDL goes up. So if you eat, we're gonna, we're gonna go over a heart, a heart disease slide and I'm gonna show you that 80% of your risk factors for heart disease disappear on a low carbohydrate, high fat diet. Yeah, and I was gonna say too, just, uh, I didn't say the first time I spoke with uh, about, you know, like, like, like two months in, I went to the, to, to, like, to the doctor and got like a physical. And I, I don't remember all my, you know, all my numbers or anything, but the doctor was like, I cannot believe this. Because I mean, you're, you're like, like, like the healthiest you've ever been since I've been your doctor. And I mean, he, I asked him what I, what I need to work on. He told me nothing. Just to keep doing what you're doing. I mean, it was awesome, you know. You keep eating butter and uh, eat barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I told him. I go, just, just like tell all your patients, to come, to come and eat lots of barbecue. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, so, you know, but like, like, like before, I, I hated going to the doctor. Now I kind of like going to the doctor because, you know, he tells me all these good things. And you know. I, I was also going to say, you know, this might sound like it, it's going to be tough to do and, and, like, and, like, you know, hard to do with all your friends because they're going to want you to eat and stuff. It, it really isn't that hard. I mean, you just do it. And then after a few weeks, when people are telling you that, 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 that you look good, like, like you look better, what are you doing? It's, it, 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 it's nice, you know, and it, it builds on it. And then everybody, all your friends want to do it. And uh, so, any, any other questions? That was going to be my question. Like, did you have to um, stay at home and make your own foods? Or did, is there a lot of options that you find when you go out to eat? Um, or was that the difficult part? 
No, you know, I, I do cook at home a lot, but I, but, but I go out to eat a lot too. You know, you just, just got to watch out what you do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really easy. I know that he's going to show you all like a story like, like about a guy that just, just ate out like McDonald's stuff a little later. He's not going to tell you to do that. That's, that's not good for you, but, um, but yeah. You can eat fast food three meals a day, every single meal, as long as you count your carbs. You can still lose weight. Yeah, no, and, and I do. I, I eat out a lot. I really do. Well, one, one, one thing, you know, is I eat, you know, I eat in my own place, but, you know, I do. I, I go get a burger, and, you know, I just, I just don't eat the bun. I, but, you know, I, I get the double meat, double, the, the double cheese, and I eat the heck out of it. So. <laughs> and that's one thing that we do in our family, too, is we, eat, we do eat out a lot, and when we do, we get double meat, double cheese. And what we used to do is everybody had a bun. And in addition to everybody having a bun, everybody got their own order of fries. And so what we may do is, you asked a question about potatoes, and so uh, we may split one order of french fries between four people. So, you know, we may have a few french fries, but it's not everybody has a bun top and bottom, and everybody has their own order of fries, and everybody has a soda. Yes, ma'am. Back to the butter question, is the main thing just making sure it says butter on there and not if it's yellow and on a, in a stick, assuming that it's butter. So reading that it's not margarine, that it's not, you know, a mixture of butter and other things. It should just be butter. And in fact, I'll recommend a brand of butter for you to buy if it's grass fed. Okay. Any, any other questions? How much fruit do you eat? Um, I don't eat a whole lot of fruit, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't, I don't like fruit as much as I like, like, um, like vegetables. So I don't, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how much you do, but I, but uh, yeah, I don't eat a whole lot of fruit. I mean, I do eat like when I want, you know, like a like like a, like, a, like a sweet tooth or something. I'll eat fruit instead of you know a pie now, <laughs> and and I, I I like it. I enjoy it. You know, so. I know that, that my my, uh, my mom has been kind of doing it, and she eats a lot of fruit, so and it, it, it's worked for her. And we'll go over the fruit yeah. slide. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Pastor Jordan, we cite your or Pastor Ray's grass is organic. Is there a need to focus on lean versus full fat in meats, or since you're supposed to get all your fat from avocado, coconut, and olive oil? I think uh, I think meats. That are the fattest. <laughs> that are the fattest. That satur saturated fat for me, healthy. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, I, I just say I don't really pay pay, 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 pay much attention to that. I just eat, you know. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good point because yeah. you know this kind it's of. It's hard to do that, yeah. This kind of meal, this kind of conference, it depends on what your health goals are, right? Because if your health goal is to lose weight, or your health goal is to improve your HDL or something like that, or your health goal is to get rid of diabetes, you know, you can kind of adjust. You have to get into more detail on exactly what you're going to do. But, um, you know, and that's how I approached the diet, was I just, when I approached the diet, I said, I'm done eating carbohydrates. And I didn't really pay attention. I just ate all the meats and vegetables I wanted and just stopped eating the killer carbs. At that point, I didn't focus on whether it was grass-fed or not. But I mean, you know, grass-fed has higher omega-3s and lower omega-6. Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. Uh, Omega-6s are inflammatory. So, and you do the same thing with milk. Milk from grass-fed cows has higher omega-3s. You do the same thing with your fermented dairy. You do the same thing with eggs. So you can, you can carry, you can carry the ideas in this diet, you know, further down the path, like as far down the path as you want to go. Um, if you want to minimize inflammation, I would probably do all of those things. If you just want to lose weight, improve your blood sugar, and improve your blood pressure, then you don't necessarily have to do all those things. It's a good point too. I think that that you can do it to 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 fit your lifestyle, and it's going to make a difference, you know. So. We'll switch over to the next uh, the next section. Thank you. Thank you.
If you're ever in Odessa, you go to the Rocking Q for your health food. <laughs> Rocking Q barbecue joints. <laughs> Beans are not a killer carb, and we'll do a slide on beans. Uh, with beans, you, if you consume beans, you should kind of count the carbohydrates and see how many carbs you're, you're consuming. But beans, they don't raise your blood sugar or your insulin levels terribly. So just like Bob was convinced by his own results, I was convinced by my own results. And like he started telling everybody about it, I started telling everybody about it. I thought that I had discovered the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> and so I wanted to write a book and go on a speaking tour and do speeches and tell everybody, tell all my patients about it. And um, I want to introduce you to some of these other doctors who've done the same thing. Because the question I get often, not the question, I mean this is like common sense, you know, if this is really true then why aren't doctors talking about it? Why does my doctor give me a blood pressure medication, two medications, three medications, and then give me a diabetes pill, and put me on Lipitor if I haven't had a heart attack or a stroke, and whatever? Why does my doctor do all of that instead of just telling me that a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet will do all these things? And so I want to introduce you to a few doctors who had a personal experience with this, just like me. Does anybody recognize this guy? Dr. Atkins. Dr. Atkins, very good. This is from his original, this is a more recent picture, but that's the picture from his original book, his 1972 Atkins Diet book. And Dr. Atkins had a personal experience like mine. He was a middle-aged, overweight, stressed out cardiologist who, um, uh, who lost weight by doing low carb, high fat diet, and then he prescribed it for all of his patients. And he was so excited about it, he wrote a book. This is Dr. Annika Dahlquist. She's a, a physician in Sweden. She was middle aged, kind of run down, a little overweight, and she lost weight on a low carb, high fat diet and started prescribing it for her patients. And she became such a sold out believer that she became famous in Sweden as the founder of the LCHF diet. That's what they call it. Two dietitians turned her in to the health authorities and said, you can't tell people to eat this much fat, you're gonna kill them. Just like the question about the butter, right? You can't tell them to eat this much fat, you're gonna kill them. And so the government investigated her. And after a two year investigation, she was exonerated and they said this. The Swedish National Board of Health and Welfare said, low carb diets can today be seen as compatible with the scientific evidence as an and best practice for weight reduction for patients with overweight and diabetes. Dr. Jay Wartman, he's another physician, a Canadian, and he was, was middle-aged, got diagnosed with diabetes, but he'd been out of practice for a few years, so he said, look, I know carbohydrates cause my blood sugar to go up, so what I'm gonna do is, while I research which pill to take, I'm going to cut the carbs just to keep my blood sugar controlled until I decide which medication is best. He cut the carbs, and guess what happened to his diabetes? It went away. So he never had to take the pill. And he said uh, it never occurred to him that he could tell his patients just to cut the carbohydrates out of their diet because he had always just prescribed pills. You should watch his documentary. You can find it on YouTube called My Big Fat Diet in Canada. It's fascinating, and also how to cure type 2 diabetes, just Google that. That's an interview that he does and tells his story. This is one of his patients uh, from My Big Fat Diet Canada, who in 18 weeks lost 46 pounds. The guy started off on multiple blood pressure medicines, cholesterol medications, diabetes pills, and insulin injections. Within 18 weeks, he's off all his medications, normal blood sugar, normal blood pressure, normal cholesterol, no pills. And people say, well, that's great. You know, anybody can do that in the short term, but can you maintain it? And I've done it for three years. And the reason Dr. Portman chose this patient is here he is eight years later. Normal blood sugar, normal blood pressure, not on any medication. 
Sorry, your head's cut off. <laughs> that way you can't identify the innocent, you know. Dr. Grant Schofield, this guy's a public health doctor, and he, he gives a speech, you can watch it. There's Jimmy Moore's The Mayo Channel, is listed in your handout. And on the Mayo Channel, you can watch this speech. And he gives a speech, he's been in public health for 20 years, and he apologizes for the work he's done for 20 years promoting a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet because he saw how many people it's made sick. And so he switched over to combating public health issues with low-carb, high-fat diet. This guy, uh, Troy Stapleton, he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And when he got diagnosed, he went to the dietitian and they said, you have to eat the, what is essentially the ADA diet, the American Diabetes Association diet, which is 240 grams of carbohydrates a day. But don't worry, you can chase it by adjusting your insulin. And the problem was he could never get his, with type 1 diabetes, he could never get his hemoglobin A1C down below 7.2. He got it down to 7.2, which is pretty good for a diabetic, but he was having low blood sugar episodes once a week. That, trying to get it that tightly controlled, he was having low blood sugar episodes once a week. So what he did is he got educated. He read a lot, a lot of books about diabetes and diet and sugars, why we get fat, that's an excellent book, the art and science of low carbohydrate living. living. And he read these books and got educated, and now he switched over to a low-carb, high-fat diet. And he brought his hemoglobin A1C down to 5. And 5 is normal. Absolutely normal. That's a type 1 diabetic with a normal hemoglobin A1C. And the best part is, instead of having hypoglycemia once a week, he has it once a month. So his blood sugar is better controlled with less hypoglycemia on a low-carb, high-fat diet. This guy, Dr. Tim Noakes, they call, uh, a lot of people call low-carb diet in the United States the Atkins diet. In South Africa, they call it the Noakes diet. So he's preaching this in um, South Africa. And he used to be a high-carb, he used to be a, tell people about carb loading for endurance athletics, marathons, he's a marathoner, except now he tells people uh, to do uh, low-carb, high-fat for uh, endurance athletics. And here's another one, Dr. Ralph Sundberg. And basically, his, his point, he's a speaker. He's another speaker who had a personal experience. He says there's no reason to fear the fat because 50% of all the cell membrane of every single cell in your body is saturated fat. So saturated fat like butter, lard, that found in meats, your body knows how to process that. There's no reason to fear it. Does anybody know this guy's face? Dr. Yeah, Dr. Westman. This is Eric Westman. Dr. Eric Weston's story is that he, he was a, uh, uh, a physician at Duke University, and he had a patient who had diabetes and high blood pressure who came back to him off of his medication, and his diabetes was gone, and his blood pressure was gone, and his weight was improved, and he looked great. And he said, well, what did you do? He said, well, I got on the Atkins diet. And so we're taught in medicine that things like diabetes and high blood pressure are something that you control. You control them with pills. You don't cure them with diet. And so he was so blown away by this personal experience with the patient, he's now the author of the new Atkins book. And he runs a diet and lifestyle clinic at Duke University where they treat patients with low carbohydrate, high fat diet. This guy? William Davis. This is the author of Wheat Belly. The same story, just like me, just like all these doctors, he was kind of overweight, diabetic, middle-aged guy, gets into low-carb, high-fat, transforms his life, and he uses it to treat his cardiac condition. <coughs> and he became such a believer, he wrote the book Wheat Belly. This guy is Dr. Robert Lustig, and he treats obese, overweight, hypertensive children by cutting the sugar out of their diet. Somebody had asked a question about fruit. Ounce for ounce, a cola has exactly the same amount of sugar in it as fruit juice. This is a 16 ounce fruit juice, this is a 20 ounce soda. That's why there's more sugar cubes here than there. But ounce for ounce, they're exactly the same. So, yes, ma'am. So that is what they say is 100% apple juice? 
Yes, 100% apple juice. And this shows, the real dis this shows the real disconnect that we have because we've been sold the idea as a people that this is healthy. And we give it to our kids and say, oh, you know, you need to have your fruit juice. And it's not. This much sugar is not good for anybody, adults or children alike. And so what Dr. Robert Lustig does is he's, he treats these obese, hypertensive, diabetic children by making them drink only two things, milk and water. No fruit juice, no soda. And that brings up the question of fruit. Somebody asked a question about fruit. The difference between fruit juice and soda and fruit is that a piece of fruit actually contains a lot less sugar than does a juice or a soda. Okay, And most of this sugar is bound up within fiber and within the cells of the fruit. And since it's bound up, uh, it's going to raise your blood sugar a lot less than a juice or a lot less than a, than a soda. So you can actually eat fruit. Um, if you, the other thing is this. To, juice, to make a 16-ounce apple juice, you have to juice like five apples. I mean, have you ever made orange juice, fresh squeezed orange juice, and you have to juice like six oranges to make one glass of orange juice? That's how much carbohydrates you're getting. An orange may have only this much sugar in it, but six oranges has this much sugar in it. And that's where you get into trouble. Does anybody know this guy? Dr. Ben, yeah. Dr. Ben Edwards, he, uh, he had a patient whose life was trans, not a patient, staff member whose life was transformed by diet, probiotics, digestive enzymes. So he got into this whole side of medicine too, about treating patients with a, a low carbohydrate, uh, anti inflammatory diet, probiotics, and uh, digestive enzymes. Dietitian, Karen Zinn, sports physician, Peter Buckner. Sports physician, Zeeshan Arain, nutritionist, Diane, Diane Sanfilippo, they've all had personal experience and they're all sold out believers. So what I'm telling you is the truth is doctors can't stop talking about this. There's really two kinds of doctors. There's a doctor who's had a personal experience <coughs> about the power of the low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet. And then there are those who, who haven't had an experience. And if they haven't had an experience, I can't blame them because I wasn't taught this in medical school. I wasn't taught this in medical school or continued medical education classes. In medical school, we're taught to give people pills for diseases. We're not taught that if you change your diet, all these diseases can go away for being improved. And doctors wrote most of these books. This first one, The Physiology of Taste, this is from 1825. Carbohydrates are uniquely fattening foods. This next one, Lloyd Manning, Letter on Corpulence from the 1860s. His diet, uh, cutting carbohydrates out of his life. And the most recent ones, New Atkins, Wheat Belly, Grain Brain. And a lot of these books are listed in your handout. Normally at this point we would do questions. We're running a little bit behind. Um, so let's take a five minute break. And after the five minute break, then I'll introduce our next guest speaker, Dr. Helton. It's 2.32, I'll see you.